Kyle, we'd lo- I'd love to start talking about your character, first of all, Jack, because when the film opens, Jack, who's the, the town deputy, is having a very rough time. How is he actually coping with the loss of his young wife? Oh, he's uh, not very well. That's, uh, he's in the fourth month of trying to uh, figure, out, uh, figure out where he is and deal with his emotions. At the same time, he's got his son who he's trying to... Uh, uh, he doesn't realize he's lost a connection with him, I think, until his wife's death. And that's when, that's when his, uh, he starts opening up the idea that something's wrong, probably. And then on top of that, you've got the story going on. The small town, that mysterious things begin occurring. People start complaining about objects missing. And, uh, people start missing. All the animals in town begin to miss. At the meantime, He's trying to get his son involved in something he thinks is rather important, but his son keeps disappearing. And then at one point, his son disappears completely. He can't find him. Meanwhile, with everything going on in town, he's got to find his son. And it's the, I think as the character moves on, there's a point when he realizes if he doesn't find his son, and if he doesn't allow himself closure in all the different areas of his life, he's not going to be able to live any further. And that's his drive through the second part of the film, to find his son, make himself whole. Because there is at one point after these mysterious things start happening and the sheriff disappears, that's kind of the catalyst for Jack in a way. In a way, it's nearly a displacement thing. He's, he's glad of something else to fill the void and, and he still pushes Joe out, doesn't he? There's something coming in to fill that void again. Yeah, I know. What, I, what's, what's great about the characters, there's so many obstacles. There's just so much in front of him to... Uh, to have to climb over and get around. And as he's doing that, that's when the realization comes of what, what his son means to him and what life means to him and what have you. Within all that, I mean, it, it, is, a, it is a little bit of a mystery thriller, sci-fi kind of you know, wild movie. There's no need to get too involved in, in the details of Jack's life because the main fact is he's trying to stay alive and save his son. And um, within all of that, uh, you know, it's, it's not a movie you can call a kid's movie by any means. But at the same time, you have to, uh, when you watch it and you watch these kids, I thought it was rather compelling because those kids, when you see them, you want to be, you are one of those kids. I was one of those kids. I was the kid who likes to burn things and blow things up. When I was a kid, I was a pyromaniac. And uh, uh, they're just so well cast, um, these guys. And, you know, Joel, who, Joel, who's really the, the lead in the, the movie, I mean, he really, he's never acted before. So you've got this this young man who has stepped into Hollywood on the stages of this massive production, which is called Super 8, with Steven Spielberg and J.J. Abrams never having worked before. And it was a really incredible uh, experience watching how he and J.J. worked together on screen and how that relationship uh, uh, took place. And, and as you saw in the film, it's they're, they're really extraordinary actors. And, and that's, I think, the reason why those performances are so strong and that group is so strong because as you were on the set you got an idea really fast that J.J. Uh, Abrams would, um, he didn't have any kids on the set but he had a bunch of young actors and that respect was given and he really, uh, he really respected that. It was, it was enjoyable to watch. It struck me watching this, Kyle, that Super 8 is firmly in the, the classic North American tradition of stories about, pivotal stories about, about young people that reached maybe a pivotal point in their lives. Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn, um, Little Women, um, you know, Anne of Green Gables. And I just wondered, would you agree about that, that there's something of, you know, Mark Twain, Louisa M. Alcott, J. Alcott, in in, in J.J. Abrams' background and his writing and his approach to this, these stories? What I would say is that when I read this script, what I did not see, and I was curious about, you know, we didn't, we didn't get the script. When I accepted this job, I hadn't seen the script yet. It was part of the deal. I did get to see the script once I accepted the job, once I got to the set. Then you can read the script. Until then, I had just sides. But when I read the script, I, I read it uh, probably five or six times. We literally had to go, we were allowed to go into a trailer to read it on our own. That's the secretive process of J.J. Abrams. But when I saw the film, I didn't see the moments that you're talking about, those, those moments that catch you completely off guard that are pivotal moments of all those stories that you speak about, how the characters, those, those turning points in a character's life that we, all, that we all see that move us so greatly. And I was just, the only thing I can say is that it's wonderful storytelling. Um, and uh, the characters are completely 
uh, always growing and changing within the story. And at the end of the movie, you wish there was 10 more minutes of it left. Um, and I, I cannot wait to take my daughters and sit down in the theater and watch this movie with them. I'm very excited about that. And any movie that uses my show on the closing credits gets my, my vote as well. Great soundtrack. Kyle, lovely to meet you. Thank you very uh, much. Thank you very much. We wish you every success with the film when it opens here. Thank you very thank much. You.